morning everybody. Let us have an experiment to see what is elevation in boiling point. It's the conducting tip of the thermometer. And here are the readings start with minus 10 degrees centigrade to 0, then 10 degrees centigrade, 20, 30, and so on up to a uh, hundred and ten degree centigrade with its subdivisions okay pure water is heated up to boiling we dip the thermometer here we go 50 60 70 80 90 degree centigrade 95 and go slow up to 100 degree centigrade and now it's constant and the temperature is not increasing and it's constant now this is the boiling temperature we add salt common salt to the pure solvent when we dip the thermometer and 40 50 60 70 80 90 95 and now this is 100 degree centigrade 104 and 105 and now it's constant at so, what is the result of our experiment? We found the boiling point of pure solvent, pure water, to be 100 degree centigrade. Let it to be T1 degree centigrade. Also, we found the boiling point of solution means after adding the solute sodium chloride into the pure solvent, it was 105 degree centigrade. let it to be t2 degree centigrade so now the difference in temperature will give us the elevation in boiling point This was our experiment. This was the additional temperature absorbed by the solution. Though we can never maintain this extra temperature in a pure solvent at one atmospheric pressure. But when we add the solute, now we are able to, to you know, uh, uh, to, to maintain a temperature which is greater than 100 degree centigrade at that one atmospheric pressure. Okay, uh, we'll derive the uh, equation. Consider we have a vessel containing water. This is the lead, means the cover. So there is always an atmospheric pressure. So when will this lead uh, 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 start jumping? 
as we give heat, as we give heat to the vessel, the water molecule start vaporizing. So as the water molecule start vaporizing, more and more vapor molecules will be accumulated here. And they will start giving a pressure on this lid. This is the lid. So when this vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure, then the lead start jumping. So there must be a temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. So that temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure is called the boiling point. But the boiling point we are now discussing is about the pure solvent. Very distilled water, pure water, no solute is dissolved in it. So as you know, at one atmospheric pressure, the boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade. But when we add some solute to the solvate, then it has been observed that, uh, we'll also observe today uh, through an experiment. The boiling point of solution is always greater than the pure solvate. So this difference in temperature, that is boiling point of solution, which is higher, and the boiling point of the pure solvate, the difference between these two temperature gives us the elevation in boiling point. That means at which elevated temperature the solution boils. Okay. So all these things can be represented through a graph. Okay. So we will draw a graph of vapor pressure versus temperature. Okay. So, so, in this vapor pressure of temperature, let this is the one atmospheric pressure. And by definition, uh, the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a solution becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure is called the boiling point. So if we take a pure solvent, say this is the pure solvent and this is the vapor pressure curve of pure solvent and this is the temperature at which this is the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. So this Pb0 is the boiling point for the pure solvent. Okay, but as you know, if we add solute to the solvent, it becomes the solution, and the vapor pressure of the solution is less than the pure solvent. That's why the graph takes a form like this. This is pure solvent. This is solution 1. Similarly, if we will take another solution with high concentration, higher concentration, and in this point, we present of the pressure, which we will denote as Tb dash is the boiling point for this solution 1. Okay? When we draw uh, the graph uh, or the curve 
for solution 2 having higher concentration. Okay, so its vapor pressure is still lower, hence its boiling point is still higher, right? That will be represented as PV double dash. So the difference between these two temperature means the boiling point of the solution 1 and boiling point of the pure solvent is represented by del T B. Okay, del T B. This del T B is the elevation in boiling point. Okay, so our derivation is now according to what? Our derivation uh, will depend on the fact that the elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to the lowering in vapor pressure. How? You see, when the vapor pressure of solution is lower than the pure solvent, it boils at a higher temperature compared to this uh, boiling point of the pure solvent. Okay. But when you take the solution too, again with higher concentration, it is having a still higher boiling point, Tb double this. So, higher is the lower in vapor pressure, higher will be the, uh, you know, boiling point. So, the elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to the elevation, sorry, directly proportional to the, uh, you know, lowering in vapor pressure. So, we will write del Tb directly proportional to del P. Where does this del P comes? From the Rouse uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure, okay. As you know, P0 minus PS by P0 is equal to X solute. That's why we can write this P0 minus PS as del P by P0 is equal to X solute. Now this is clear since this is a constant del P directly proportional to X solute. This del P we are saying lower in vapor pressure. So since del T P directly proportional to del P and del P directly proportional to X solute from these two relationship, we are getting del T B directly proportional to X solute. Are you getting that? So <clears throat> we started with lower in vapor pressure relating with the you know uh, elevation in boiling point then related with uh, the mole fraction of the solute is x solute and accordingly we plus so we got del tb directly proportional to x solute so implies del tb is equal to it gets a proportionality constant x solute and since this is the mole fraction, it will be K number of mole of solute by total mole of the uh, uh, solution. That means number of mole of solute plus number of mole of solutes. But for dilute solution, very dilute solution, say very dilute solution, N solute, number of mole of solute, is very very less than number of mole of solvent and hence we can neglect this n solute as compared to the number of moles of solvent and accordingly what we can do and accordingly this n solute plus n solvent can be written as uh, purely n solvent so we'll write del tv is equal to k into n solute by N solvent. So accordingly we will proceed. Uh, that means uh, uh, further modifying this equation and reaching at what we want. So now see, by further developing, we get del T is equal to K into N solvent by given mass of solvent by molecular mass of solvent. So we can take this molecular mass of solvent to up and we get K into N solute 
into molecular mass of solvent by this given mass of the solvent. Now, this is a constant and the molecular mass of the solvent is also constant. Constant into constant giving rise to another constant. We write that molar elevation constant or called a bulioscopic constant. This KB is molar molar elevation constant or it is also called a bulioscopic constant. So KB is nothing but K into molecular mass of solvent. So the remaining is N solute, okay, by W solute. So we, what we get, the number of mole of solute per kilogram of the solvent is nothing but the molality. So we get del TB is equal to KB into MS. What is MS? So MS is the molality. MS is the molality. MS is N solute, uh, that means number of moles of solute dissolved per kilogram of the solvent. So, further uh, applying the formula of molality, we get del TB is equal to KB into W, means the given mass of the solute into 1000 by small m means molecular mass of the solute into capital W means W solvent. I have modified this thing. It's given mass by molecular mass. So where W is mass of solute small w and small m is the molecular mass of solute. So this is the required equation for elevation in boiling point okay so depending upon this formula we can determine the molecular mass of an unknown solute we if we know what gram of that solute has been added to a, a fixed amount of uh, you know solvent uh, given mass of solvent if we know the molar elevation constant of the solvent and uh, if we know the what is the elevation in boiling point then the molecular mass of the unknown solute can be calculated. So since elevation in a boiling point is related to the molecular mass of the solute, so that means directly it links to the number of particles because uh, uh, the molecular mass is linked to the mole and mole is related to the number of particles. So any property of a solution that depends upon the number of particles uh, is called a colligative properties and uh, accordingly this elevation in boiling point is also a colligative property. Thank you. We will discuss in the next class.